everybody it's your girl danny aka nekoyasha and we're doing another blur view episode featuring mermaid moon child burning star and ash the conqueror and we're about to talk about why textures room is trash y'all texturism is super trash for those of you guys who don't know the definition of texturism texturism is like favoring or praising a certain type of black hair specifically black hair that's looser has a finer curl pattern um, and typically you see that associated with like biracial women or lighter skin toned women. So texturism has a lot of its roots in colorism, um, but it's something that we've all experienced. I think the reason we all got gathered here today is because of something that happened very recently in 2021 to our very own Ash the Conqueror. Tell us about your little story, Ashley. Well, it's interesting. I would say that this this woman thought that I would agree with her because I I would say I probably <laughs> yes I'm gonna go ahead and say it I probably benefit from texturism because my hair texture is like maybe like 3b 3c so a lot of times when people do my hair they think that they can insult other people because of the texture of hair that I have and she was wrong but she did something like what like I would think a man would do, you know, when a man compliments a woman until they bring another woman down. Like that's how yeah. we got to the conversation. She was like, are you mixed? You have good hair. And I was like, I'm not mixed, but everyone has good hair. That's what I said. I was like, and she was like, well, 4C hair is not good hair. And I was like, why do you think that? And she was like, because it's so hard to deal with. And I was like, maybe 4C is hard to deal with because we live in a world that centers around a certain type of beauty and doesn't make products and tools and things available for all different hair textures have you ever mm -hmm. thought of that she's like no I just don't like it, it it's just it's just ugly the way it just shrink up blah, 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 just so you don't have any talent and go damn <laughs> just say you failed yeah. in hair school okay <laughs> <laughs> it's so interesting it seems like texturism is much more prevalent in natural hair communities and amongst other black people. Um, because typically, um, although the beauty standards are based in uh, white beauty standards, white people don't typically comment on our hair in a negative fashion. They do that weird, like, let me touch it thing, but they don't go into our textures as being um, something to separate on. Colors, size, designs, maybe, but texturism, it seems like it's becoming more and more and more something that we are doing to each other. Mm -hmm. It's so weird. Well, I would say that I agree with that, but I also think about the media. Like when you see a black woman in media, you see a black woman in any position that is getting like camera time, they don't typically look like the average black person that you see they don't have 4c hair they have loose curl patterns they have light skin and you know Someday we know that these corporations mm -hmm. are owned by these white people they're tracy looking <laughs> hair yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> so and like it's so funny because i watched that same that same video what was it the black girl fetish video and she kind of touched on this too like the idea that like some white people are trying to profit off of making us feel better when it was their ancestors who contributed to this and it might be their uncle or their father or even them that's continuing continuously playing into this by hiring lighter skinned people with looser hair patterns for different shows for different roles typecasting things like that so it's all around us yeah. yeah so what um you said you're like 3b 3c yeah what about you uh Kai um I'm pretty sure I'm like the quote-unquote standard black texture hair I I don't I'm not really good with like the exact um terminology but I'm pretty sure I'm like 4c maybe 4b at the loosest probably something like that I don't know my hair is definitely like pretty thick and stuff I hated it as a kid, honestly. I'm like tender headed, so I was just like, uh, I hated my hair for a <laughs> while. That's a valid reason to hate your hair. Not because yes. you thought it was ugly, but because 
a comb, a rat tail comb, and 4C hair are uh, to be made. I hate it. <laughs> and my mom was just like, oh, you have like such thick hair. And I'm like, no, I hate it. I wish I had like that thin stuff because like then they don't even have to do anything with it. <laughs> At least that's what my logic as a kid was. I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. white people also have to do stuff with their hair, but you know, it didn't seem like a lot as a kid. <laughs> what about you, Dean? So I have a uh, 4B, 4C hair, like, it's, it's so funny because, like, I call it hemispheres, like, this right side of my head, it's, like, 4C, but I have, like, this one patch in, like, the back of my head that's 4B, and then this section right here is, like, both, and I'm just, like, this is stupid, <laughs> so I have all of the 4B, and it's why I shaved both sides of my head last, late last year, because, one, it was a pandemic, mm. I wasn't going nowhere, and two, I just got sick and tired of taking care of all that hair. And I was like, this has got to go now. I need like, take this away. It's too thick, too curly. I'm lazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, I, that hemisphere thing is real because I don't think people even realize that people's hair is not always all one texture. Right. Um, and it's, it's interesting like it's always like the back or the front mm -hmm. or the side, like just some random patch that's something different. Um, I know just to just to clarify to the to the watchers and the viewers out here, I do not have a perm. My beautician is just real, real, real good with a blow dryer. Same. same. <laughs> this is my first blowout um I had in like two years. This this is why I don't have my fro, y'all. Putting that out there too. <laughs> yeah. So my hair is actually a three, three B, three C. So I don't even know if there is a three C, but I'm gonna claim it if there isn't. Hmm. Um I'm pretty sure there is. For those who don't know what the number system is, one is like straight hair, two is like wavy hair, three is curly hair, and four is kinky hair. So then when you get to the A, B, and C spectrum, it's just making it like tightening up those coils a little bit more um, in those subcategories. So if you're not sure what your texture of hair is, you can ask your local beautician as long as she's not as trash as Ashley's beautician. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We should, you know, I'm not going to say we should shout her out, but we should consider it. Would that be, I mean, would that be cyberbullying then? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like, the opportunity to know up front whose hands they're letting in your hair because, you know, from the uh, from the desk of Mermaid Moonchild, energy transfer is really, mm -hmm. really, really mm -hmm. easily. But like you should be how, very careful who you let touch your hair. How can you know, though, like, I was like, she was halfway through my head when she said that. And I was like, oh, uh, she was not halfway through. Your halfway head. through. Oh, no. yes. You was, you was almost out. done. Yeah. No, it's not like she, I just sat that was down. Deliberate. <laughs> she was like, I'm going to wait to be trash until she can't leave. Literally. Like, that's, that shit's deliberate. Like, you got to be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to like do her halfway and then I'm just going to drop all my trash opinions. And then she can't leave without looking like a hot mess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying, like, to think I've had any, I'm trying to think if I've had any experiences like that recently. I mean, I've had the same beautician since I was in high school, though. So, That's so nice. Mm -hmm. That's so yeah, nice. that is it's actually the same. Actually. That's family at that point. <laughs> oh yeah, she, she's definitely family. She <laughs> shout out to uh, Tuesday Ashley. All eyes on uh, Ashley on Instagram. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> if anybody follows my personal page, which I'm not shouting out, um, I always when I get my hair done, I always show my natural hair up front, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then what it looks like in the end. So you can check out what my hair really looks like if I like you enough to give you access. Yeah, I've had the same uh, uh, hairstylist um, too since like high school. Cause like I've been dreading since high school. Mm -hmm. So um, I mean, someone started, someone else started my dreads for a bit, but then like my mom's um, friend like um, has been doing it since like high school easily. So um, it's been, it's, she's really cool. Like, so shout out to Miss Desiree. I don't know her socials, but you know. <laughs> oh, I've, I, this is like the first time in years I've had a set stylist because my, my hair has been a lovely journey since middle school. <laughs> Ugh, middle school. 
yeah like no I did too many years with the creamy crack and then mm -hmm. slowly transitioned away and then once I finally decided to transition away the stylist the third stylist I had at that time because like my first original stylist she retired so I had to find a new one that was like when I was leaving high school going to college so I went to a person she recommended I went to her for four years but when I got sick and tired of doing relaxers she's like oh you can transition but like when you start transitioning I'm going to charge you extra and I'm like wait <laughs> I'm like what you mean extra she's like oh it's because your hair texture is changing I'm like what that's the other thing texture isn't like yeah. it costs yes. so much more money to have my hair be what it naturally grows out of my head yep. and yep. that's yeah. why I'm with the lovely person I'm with now because when I told her that she's like oh just come to me I won't charge you extra and she just and she's also one of my co-workers and she got her beauty license and so I've been with her sir, for about four or five years now and it's she's like the best shout out to my girl Lola Vone who always keeps me looking fresh Thank you, Lola. Mm -hmm. You don't play texturism because she loves my hair. She, she loves my 4 hair. She's always just like, I like your hair because it's like a sponge and I can just play with it. I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> She's like the first stylist I've ever had that made me feel good about having 4 hair. So yeah, that's my story. That's important. That's super important because, you know, Ashley, we were talking about this before, before we came here, but, you know, a lot of this is rooted in some deep historical trauma. Do you want to shed some light on what we talked about earlier yes it's so funny like when I was a child I felt like I had a taste of that history of um how we all are colonized I mean mm -hmm. that's that's the truth of it where we are stolen people from a colonized land at least black people are um and then like you know Native Americans are colonized Indian people are colonized Yes. So people what happens color. is, yes, exactly. People of color. So what happens is people who are colonized will take up the beauty standards of the colonizer, of the oppressor. And so that is what has plagued us for so long. My, my first taste of history was that my great grandmother, she said to me, she was like, your skin tone, you're a little dark, but at least your hair is nice. And that's why I was like, what? And like, people only liked my hair when it was straight. So I cut all that stuff off and I started over. And then I found people were still saying, oh, you have good hair because my curl is looser. Mm -hmm. And I, it makes me super uncomfortable because I know in the past people couldn't get into clubs. People were treated badly if they couldn't put a comb in their hair if they if a, if they put a pencil in their hair and it stuck there if it didn't fall to the ground if they couldn't get a comb through your hair you could not get into places it was more than just a paper brown bag test it was also mm -hmm. like what is the hair that's growing out of your head and so when you're we the way i see it is we have been conditioned generation to generation to favor people who have looser hair because they get preferential treatment. Now, am I saying that they don't suffer from oppression? No, I'm not saying that. They do. Because every time I explain colorism, texture, people are like, no, I suffer from oppression too. No, you absolutely do. But mm -hmm. there's perks within that line. There's a hierarchy. And so yep. if you have a looser curl pattern, you get more benefits. And so we've seen that since slavery, since we were in chains, people working in the house, people working in the house were still suffering. But to us, it was like, well, you know, but still they get to eat a little bit of masses food and stuff like that. That has been conditioned in us. It's, it's like, what do they call it? Operant conditioning. Like, oh, you get a reward for having a certain thing. Almost like. Mm, the Pavlovian yeah yeah and then people also don't realize that DNA carries memories people don't ever want to talk about epigenetics but that stuff it, it's passed down in our DNA as well and then it's constantly reinforced so we're fighting against a lot of things when it comes mm. to texturism and it's, it's it's hard to unlearn but we've got to unlearn it yeah, I really um, get what you mean about DNA, like carrying memories, because like with me growing up, 
I, I didn't really grow up around people saying, oh, good hair and bad hair. And yet I still kind of caught on to like, um, and I did eventually grow up to like hate my hair, even beyond the, um, you know, tender headedness thing. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I just remember like watching TV and like wishing and like never really seeing like, um, little black girls like me, or if I did that, um, they had like, um, relaxed or straightened or like whatever hair too like um like that's a raven for example like her hair like she of, of course now i now i know that she was wearing like weaves or like other stuff but like um you know being like uh, the dumb little kid i was i was just like huh oh man i wish i had straight hair like her like how does she get straight hair like mm -hmm. and even when my mom was like you know that's fake right and i'm like no it has to be real somehow <laughs> because like because like i mean not until like i feel just recently people even started talking about things like weaves and like sew-ins and like all that other stuff so um, I just feel like, and like no one had to tell me that like my hair was bad for me to still like kind of just, well, mm. hair, bad, you know, quote unquote. Um, no one really had to tell me that my hair um, isn't the Eurocentric standard of beauty for me to catch on to that. Like um, mm. you see that through representation, through like the characters we see, um, whether they were white or black and you know, and combined with that and with like um, the mentalities that have been passed down through our generations, um, I just feel like that can even lead up to this um, good hair, bad hair kind of standard, mm -hmm. even without um, um, explicitly telling a child, oh, you have good or bad hair. Yeah, and a lot of that Absolutely. has been captured in media. A lot of that is captured in media. Um, especially more recently, it seems like we're trying to address it in in the black community because mm -hmm. you get the the uh good hair bad hair movies like we literally have two movies that are, <laughs> yeah um, good hair bad hair and win a horror film and, <laughs> and, and it's like that th those are very extreme movies with one of them being more of a documentary and you guys check that out at your leisure but we are so conditioned from generational things things that are impacted in our dna like ashley mentioned um, but then even just in our lifetime, like think of how many Easter's were spent preparing for your ears to get burnt, preparing for like, sitting in the kitchen, the oh, concept God. that we all had accepted that chemical burn was just a thing that could happen <laughs> because we needed straight hair is yeah. wild. But it's that, it's that root and connection to colorism that keeps things like texturism alive and thriving the closer aesthetic pr proximity we have to whiteness, it seems like the more elevated we can be as a people. And we have internalized that in a way that um, even, I mean, honestly, even with me, I have natural hair, but I straighten it. Um, is it, is it, and in my, my, you know, rhetoric to myself, it is I'm straightening my hair because it's easier for me to throw it in a ponytail and go. Um, mm -hmm. Or, or is it that, secretly I know with my straight hair I'll get more accomplished in the field of work that I'm in than otherwise because we've seen so many instances of people being chastised belittled and um like admonished for their hair people who did hard work went to school trained um years and years and years just because of their hair like it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Colin Kaepernick, for example, the minute he started speaking up for black people, his Afro was out of control. Like, and he's mm -hmm. fair skinned. He has the benefit of colorism on his side. Right. And they still yeah. were like, mm, but that hair though. And it was from both sides of the fence. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah. we could have let him be our black superhero with an Afro. Yeah. People who don't like yeah. um, black men, especially having long hair, I noticed. Um, like, I remember um, recently John Boyega started like growing his hair out, especially after he mm -hmm. left Star Wars. And um, he sees that as like, uh, at least from what I've read, that that's a statement for him um, in regards to like, um, just like growing his hair out and being like um, unashamed of his um, blackness in a way. Mm -hmm. So um, I feel like there's definitely um, that with um, black men as well, um, to an extent, not, not as strong Absolutely. as an extent. Absolutely. There's not my, as much texturism, but there's definitely like, um, oh, black men shouldn't have long hair if they can help it. Yes, my my partner has long hair and 
I just saw him on your birthday post. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but his his uh his his family always be making sly comments like why don't you cut it and and it that's not what men who make money look like and that's not a good you know oh it's like gosh the right. harassment like that's why when men say sometimes I don't understand colorism I don't understand textures I don't I'm like yeah you do you just <laughs> it's just, just different for you I don't know. yeah yeah it's different. Put it through the lens of um, those beard conversations they have about mm-hmm. when their beards don't connect and then they understand texture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I know there were a couple of other instances we've seen recently with, um, you know, public figures kind of getting this backlash. What's some of the examples you guys have um, noticed? Well, I'll go right off the bat because now that I remembered because we talked about this earlier. Uh, let's talk about the judge from Dallas, Texas, uh, Amber Givens Davis. Uh, she's a young 30 something year old judge that was voted into her precinct. And she came in her, like, you know, the, the photo they would hang up on the wall. It's like her in this magnificent, glorious fro. But the photo of her that went viral on the news outlets was where she had uh, either it was a blowout or braids and you notice she had a mohawk both of her sides were shaved and as well as she had like striking makeup like which not striking it's just purple lipstick but apparently that's striking for but <laughs> purple, <laughs> purple, lipstick, striking. purple lipstick with jewelry and a shaved head oh no that is that is too much for a judge and she's like i don't care i'm living my authentic self mm. And it's crazy. Nobody acknowledges uh, her law degree. <laughs> right. She She's a whole judge. In <laughs> so many meaningful cases. Everybody wants to harp on her hair. <laughs> Why? Let her hair be her hair. And it was lit. Yeah. So yeah. Like, it's nice to see a judge who literally has the same hairstyle as me. Shaved on the sides. Sometimes blows it out because it looks cute, blown out. Look, mm-hmm. You get to see the little peekaboo better on the side. <laughs> well, maybe once we start seeing more representation in the media, you know, it'll allow people to perceive us the way that we are authentically with our authentic hair. Like, there are a lot of uh, non people of color who have these perceptions of what your hair means about who you are because even with that judge she all of a sudden was ghetto she was just and it's just like how did that become my hair made me ghetto because there was a a post that went viral not too long ago with white women with their hair shaved and purple lipstick and the bull like the matador kind of nose ring in corporate settings I actually, like the company I work for, I'm not going to shout them out, but the company that I work for, my chief people officer or the person who handles our human resources has a mohawk. <laughs> like she nice. walked around with her mohawk yeah, right. and, and she recently just dyed her hair like, like platinum blonde <laughs> because, because she can. Why but also not? nobody yeah. questions it. Nobody asks any questions to um, non-people of color when they make those types of extreme statements with their hair. And that is... Something I want to see change in the near future. I want to be able to wear my hair however I want to, mm. and there be no perception associated with it. Yeah, it's, it feels like like black women, especially, just like um, no matter how we wear our hair, whether it's like um, permed or like there's a sewn or weave or like natural and stuff, people always got something to say with about our hair. It's um, <laughs> pretty annoying, honestly. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and like the the little girls have to suffer too. I've seen so many stories of little girls getting kicked out of school. Or getting their hair cut. Yeah, just because they have natural hair. And I'm like. This is literally how our hair grows out at the top of our heads. Right. Like if it's distracting, then like, I don't know. Maybe you should get your kids checked out if if it's distracting, right. Meanwhile, little Tommy ain't brushed his hair in a month. <laughs> Walking and around with greasy little moppy strings. Yes. Okay. Right. I knew a little, yeah, 
let's not let's not discount all the lice checks we had to go through in oh. my generation at least oh Bro. my gosh i didn't even know lice was like a thing thing until i went even. to a white school <laughs> like when i went to like a white school for the very first time there was like a lice check like every other month and i was just like y'all getting bugs in your hair yeah like... isn't there checking our hair and we're like come on you know i don't have hey <laughs> Especially, I, be protecting us. especially because I wore a lot of cornrows in elementary school because my hair texture is so thick. My, my mom wanted to get me out the door, so she put my hair in cornrows. And they tried to do a lice check in cornrows. I'm just like, if you mm-hmm. break, <laughs> oh man, no, I wore my hair in cornrows a lot growing up because I was obsessed with the brat. Not really the same thing, but uh, also a thing that I felt like. Yeah. I felt. Mm. <laughs> um the like lice so uh my mom adopted children when I was growing up and my adopted siblings are white so I have experienced lice firsthand oh no (laughs) and at that point I was like and y'all are worried about my hair for what now (laughs) this is okay not to and not to say or talk down on you know non-people of color who do have this lice experience but you guys overall don't deal with the sheer amount of focus on your hair when your hair can literally breed bugs <laughs> like that's right <crazy. laughs> uh-huh. right like out of all the I, I've been to like mostly black schools because I live in like a mostly black city and I'm like I've never dealt with like bugs in your hair until I went to like a mostly white school you know not saying I'm just saying <laughs> yep. yeah so are there any like what examples in media do you think are helping us to kind of move away from this texturism uh, debacle? And are there any examples that you see today that are like, oh gosh, please somebody change it. <laughs> I want Doja Cat to wear her real hair. She won't. I need Doja I Cat know. to do a lot more than her hair. But right, I feel like that's one of <laughs> less of her problem. I, I need Doja to learn that she is struggling with her internalized issues. That as well. <laughs> Sorry, no, let's, it's just let's, let's go away from Doja. Yeah. Got going on. Uh, a positive <laughs> example I can think of was um, the movie Jingle Jangle that came out last year. Uh, a really good movie you haven't seen it uh a lot of the characters along with their um the clothing that's like a mixture of like um both like victorian but like also like um african inspired like um you know that combination as well fusion there's also um the most of the characters had natural hair um both men and women alike and i thought Mm -hmm. that was um super cool uh yeah (laughs) <laughs> yeah I watched that with my daughters and my daughter who has uh some uh, 4c 4b mix going on she was she looked at me maybe five minutes into the movie and she was like everybody's hair is so beautiful <laughs> yeah <laughs> I was like <laughs> but I kept it together I had to keep it cute I, right like imagine better, if you better like than me I would have been crying <laughs> <laughs> It was it was a great moment and um that same daughter of mine she's really into anime like so into anime and today she did an assignment um how to draw an anime character and she has been talking about the fact that she doesn't see a lot of black anime characters on the shows that she's watching so she drew a black anime character and she put some intention behind the hair so that was really cool to see um how movies like Jingle Jangle and even movies like Soul that came out on Christmas, you know, seeing that is starting to create conversations in the younger generation. Yeah. Because I think when I was young, and I I know I'm a little bit older than um, Ashley H and um, Burning Star, Kai. Um, The only example I had was uh, Susie Carmichael. Yep. (laughs) Number Gerald, five, Gerald. Number five. Hey, number five. <laughs> Vince from I, Recess. I, I. Yeah, Vince was there, but that's that's it. That's about it, and that's about. And and they were always. Uh, I mean, to be honest, wasn't I, Vince yeah. also in Captain Planet? Let me. Oh my gosh! Yeah, they were doing like that one black male character for like a decade. Sorry, With the, it was the one black male character. They all had the high top. <laughs> it was right. a, a high top situation. That's all they could do. They could not draw nothing. But and they were top. always the cool sporty one right true athletic if only they knew how much (laughs) 
non athletic. Like, we can't all play basketball, y'all. But shout out to Gerald. I would have to Gerald. But yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to find good good examples of true black hair in animation, in anime, in live action, in, in most of blurred related content. Um, yeah, Black Panther too, I guess. <laughs> Ooh, Ooh, yeah, Black yeah. Panther yeah. after that part, but that was kind of they didn't have a choice. Right? <laughs> and I don't know if you guys have seen Bridgerton, but Bridgerton knocks. There are so many Black characters in Bridgerton, which doesn't even really make sense. And they highlight the fact that some of the early queens of England were Black. The queen is Black in Bridgerton. Okay, I heard of that. <laughs> mm. Shameless plug. Bridgerton it's on my to watch coming list. soon. Watch it, watch it. It's really, really, really good. And there is one man with dreads with blonde tips, and he's okay. in like almost every really? scene. And I'm like, I don't know who this man is, but he is representing <laughs> across the board. Um, so we're definitely seeing it more and more now. But I think there's still a long way to go when it comes to anime, this, you know, a passion for the blurred view, and um, as well as some of our more superhero related comics. Yeah. yeah, the best they could do was Usopp, and even Usopp got got loose hair. Man, I, I could I could do a whole other episode about black representation in Japanese Japanese anime media. Okay, that's a whole other episode. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's more of a series. Really. There have been some dark turns. With that like, yeah. Dragon Ball Z. No I didn't intended. know. I didn't know until I looked really opened my eyes. And I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. As a Black person who's been to the Far East, listen, they just don't even know. They are shocked when they see us. They didn't even know what we look like at all. So <laughs> I'm not shocked that they can't draw our hair because it is uh, an enigma. Yeah. Yeah, I know because before. every time I've ever been, I've been to Thailand a couple of times. There is an obsession with just like, oh, your skin. Oh, <laughs> but like, don't they have the internet over there? That's the thing, though. I mean, I've seen like yeah. Asian people on like the internet too. Like, I feel like they just minding their business. They stay in their lane because <laughs> 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 it is a it's it's interesting to be in that environment, and it's not so much. It's not like the um, westernized version of "Oh, can I touch your hair." It's genuine, yeah. like, I have never seen that type of hair before in my entire life. Mm-hmm. How does your hair do this? I'm like, Jesus, I don't know. Honestly, like, maybe I can't blame them because I'm sitting here thinking, like, a celebrity who's, like, femme and has 4C hair and, like, my brain is, like... Viola oh, Davis. Viola Davis? Yeah, I thought I'm saying <laughs> Viola. And, um... And she, she wears it proudly on how to get away with murder. Uh, Shonda did a great job yes. of uh, pushing that yes. forward. Well, I need to check that out then. That's how. That's why she did so good on Bridgerton. She's been she's been planting these seeds for us secretly. Now, one day she's gonna give us a um, lead black on black love story. But we don't take yeah. it. in time, in time. Sure? Oh yeah, and Whoopi. <laughs> Can't forget our girl Whoopi. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. This Whoopi man. is so slept on. God. People, they really do. But because of texturism, because of colorism, even in her most famous, well known movie, texturism and colorism were the main things that kept her back, kept her down, except for to the woman who left her. <laughs> in spite of it all, here it is. Yeah. Right? Really if you her. haven't read that book, the movie doesn't awesome. know that relationship is nothing like it is in the book. Just FYI. Oh. You're talking about the color purple? Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The book is very, and it's also very different from the play too. Oh, okay. So there's like three versions of the same story out there. Yeah, cool. but they're all good yeah. though. They're all good though. Okay. And then, oh, oh yeah, Lupita Nyong'o. Can't forget her. Oh yes. Bro, yeah. Yes. That's all I can think of. Were those three? I'm not even. That's. <laughs> and, and there it no, is, but it's only three. That's what I'm saying. Meanwhile, I, every actress I've seen on tv i could list and it'll take up 10 of my fingers and i gotta set, put up another hand for the 15 20 mm-hmm. i'll be seeing so many racially ambiguous light-skinned black women with loose hair with straight hair mm-hmm. gosh it's endless but i think it's going to require more conversations like this right 
more right. people demanding to see people who look like and represent them on the screen in order for us to really get that i don't think anybody knew jingle jangle was going to do as well as it did i didn't think anybody knew soul was going to do as well as right it did. i seriously I'm sure thought, thought people were going to sleep like, i thought honestly i thought people were going to sleep on all three of those and mm. and it i i can guarantee you that all um non-racially ambiguous non-loose um curl patterned black people i won't just say women as mm. soon as those shows movies started the first thing they noticed was ah oh, people who look like me and then tune yeah. in yeah oh so, yeah <laughs> absolutely it's it's this is you know we get get out there and vote get out there <laughs> get out there and watch more shows that show you looking like yourself because mm, money yeah, definitely. Talks and bullshit walks so it as do. long as netflix sees these ratings going towards shows with people who look like us every day um it's going to continue to be mainstream. Bridgerton's renewed for a bajillion seasons. I <laughs> saw. <a> <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm excited to see this push towards more acceptance of what people look like every day. And, and again, it's not the, the quest for more for see people on screen. It's just the quest. For, I just want to see a normal distribution. Right. People. Yep. Yeah. But honestly, that's what that means. Like more 4C, more people with 4C hair texture does does mean an equal distribution because there's such a scarcity. Right. I can't I can't think of even all the black um best friends in sitcoms. <laughs> they ain't even got 4C hair. Like right. I like right. like let's look at blackish. Like I feel like that's a really good example of uh texturism right there. Because most of the kids, uh, Sans, Diane, and Grandma, they all have the, a, a free range of hair, basically. Mm. Yeah. Because Andre Jr., he definitely has that 3C looking hair, even though he's got his little fade going on. I can see, I can see his curl pattern. That's like a 3C, yeah. maybe a tinge 4A. Um, Diane before they started putting her in box braids because I guess the actress herself is kind of having like her own um coming together with her own hair texture issue so before I know she had like a poor range of hair and now there was rumors that she relaxed it for one of the seasons mm -hmm. because you know we all had that motion of we need straight hair and then now she's like trying to transition back out from it so been there I feel her on that yeah yeah and I guess they're, I, we saw this earlier, like probably before our time, shows that we started watching on like Nick at Night and stuff. Um, like Ooh, Living which Single had a great representation of forcing hair. Yes, they Girl, did. Maxine, Maxine, the queen. The queen. A different world had really great represent. Like a different world shows all black people in all their different forms. Now, there was a lot of high tops, but again, we know that. <laughs> that was, a, that, that was that, the 90s. That was enough. the 90s, and yeah. that, was a, that was the it hairstyle. For, that was the thing. That was the hairstyle. Can't blame that. Right. It wasn't that excuse. Yeah. And they were in college. You know, trends are important in college. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Honestly. But yeah, I wonder if it's just that different people own the the production companies now because that there was like a transition at some point and now we're going down this road of like there not being an equal distribution where there used to be I think you're onto something because if yeah. you look at the seasons of sister sister the early seasons they started off with their natural loose hair and then as they got older and so they straightened their hair for the remaining of the series yeah. uh, college that's Hey, yeah i feel like early they put the message there really, um, <laughs> right it was gaming. like their senior year to high school they mm -hmm. yeah. That's a lot. yeah i feel like early 2000s was definitely like um like the straight hair era like that was like you know the era i was growing up in and now uh ever since like the 2010s if i had to like pick i don't know if i would pick a specific year but like um the 2010s is like um people started um gearing more towards like natural hair again i think um after like a decade or so of like um mostly straight hair mm -hmm. and now um especially now with like um everything being 
you know, quote unquote, more political than it was back then, and especially more of a pro-Black movement going on right now. Um, natural hair is even more popular now than they um, may have even been back in, well, maybe not more so, but at least as popular, I feel like, um, as popular as the 90s, I feel like, in regards to natural hair. I was gonna say, wasn't natural hair also big in the sixties? Oh yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, <70s. laughs> but like, I, I feel like they was doing it. something to it. They weren't letting their hair be. They was picking it out because everybody. Oh no, had the same. it was definitely all natural. I saw my mom and dad's photos from the seventies. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. no, no, because texturizers were real big back then. That's when the people first found out about an S curl and a Jerry curl. So they were they were doing natural hair, but they. Were we're still trying to get looser curl patterns. Mm-hmm. My mom told me a crazy story that's more TBV after dark than, than not. <laughs> uh, <laughs> about trying to loosen curl patterns um, with texturizer. So And I, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's, hey. But that, that's how deep it goes for so like, they're like, we got to loosen the curl patterns everywhere. So that, <laughs> that was a weird time. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm just like, oh, no. Oh, no. You see, I just tried to slow cream. Just push yeah. it in there. Just oh a little no, bit. baby. Because yeah, no, my dad, my dad, he didn't rock a Jerry curl, but he was rocking like a blowout, blowout, and just would pick it out. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's what my dad had. Yeah, like, and my mom. But I mean, that was around the time of the civil rights movement. So again, sure. we're kind of in that same. We're like reliving that era right now, which is why it feels very similar from a a hair love standpoint. So wait, you mean history actually repeats itself? <laughs> I hope it's going in word. the right direction. I think we got a better chance this go round. The internet is helping us. We didn't it have is. enough internet last. There time. was no internet yet. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I think I mean, what 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 do you guys think? Closing comments here, guys. More more Cannon Busters, Carolyn Tuesday. <laughs> Listen, give me more Carolyn Tuesday. I love that Carol had locks and a cute little ponytail i love that they had ezekiel rocking his locks and it was so good there was so the many, locks hey, there was so hey. many locks and so many afros like the one character i forget her name but she rocked this glorious like blown out fro you could tell it was still curly and it was a fro but she was just like picking it out and i'm just like yes angela that was her name angela <laughs> shout out to angela davis yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, Angela Davis is yeah, yeah, an icon. Forever and throughout icon. her career, she kept it natural. It just looked different every mm-hmm. decade. I felt like she had a different hairstyle, but it was still it was still natural. Natural, yep. Let's let that be uh, capable for darker skinned women, for women with four C hair. I have a dream mm-hmm. that one day we will see all textures. Yes. And especially 4C. 4C is the texture mm-hmm. of the queens <laughs> and the kings. Oh, and I get yeah. an amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sweet. Sweet. Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> I love Ashley. <laughs> this, is why, this is why I keep Ashley around. She's, you're the best thing yeah. that, that has ever happened to me and I need you to know that <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah I think uh, I think we we've harped on this for as much as we can I think we all want to see this change within the black community so let's just do our part guys mm-hmm. look mm-hmm. at you Tyra Banks I can't believe I forgot to mention that sorry Oh yeah, the Tyra uh, Banks debacle. Yeah, Tyra had a lot. She she's almost like Doja Cat. Like, should we really go on her? Ty, Ty, <laughs> Tyra tries. She's she she's a try peak, that hard. She's a peak example of she's a product of the times and had to adapt with the times and failed and still is it still internally struggling. But this wasn't even that long. Didn't even though. Naomi Campbell show her natural hair? At one, yeah. No, the thing is that Tyra had like a fro. Okay, so like I was gonna mention this. I should have mentioned it earlier, but like uh Tyra like uh, was going on Yaya da Costa because um oh. she said, Oh, you're being like um well no, she let this white woman say that um tell Yaya da Costa that oh you're being overbearingly black and like um yeah. <laughs> I Tyra was just like, yeah. she was like right. 
Well, yeah, she can make a face all you want, but you didn't say anything. She didn't say anything. Right. Right. Your yep. show. Like, you can curse that white woman out if you wanted to. Right. And then yes. she told her that, like, oh, you need to be less natural and more glamour because I guess it's I not attractive what you, how you answered the, the thing or whatever. I remember right. seeing that. I was like, yeah. ugh. And, like, she had her natural hair. and But, like, um, Tyra also had, like, this fro going on, too. And I'm just like, wrong with you like say something you let these white people like tell her oh she yeah. looks like a cowboy riding a giraffe like that's fine <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh america's next time yeah. this wasn't even that long ago this was like 2007 i was like 10 that's so, what i'm like, saying it that long ago all the, yeah. if you look all across every cycle of american next top model there have been like contestants that had natural hair and they had to be silenced or straightened Mm-hmm. Them curl, and that, then, their literal curls like silenced into straightness Try or they up. were buzzed off or shaved yeah, yeah or it's shaved. like they give yeah. a weave or they cut off all their hair there's no yeah like the black women really only have to be like oh straight hair or bald like i mean black women <laughs> that's can definitely what i'm saying bald look sometimes. you could we tell all have to have like short Tyra bald was hair. struggling especially and, when she had her own yeah. tv show too like it, like i said she tyra is learning so ever well, since she's a grown woman how much longer is gonna take <laughs> i'm I mean, sorry i'm just listen. like look you've existed <laughs> i thought that was messed up and i was like 10 yeah. like yeah. <laughs> it's she she's she's old <laughs> i was gonna say we oh, actually dang. mentioned wow. like her her boyfriend's family still makes comments like that i know that i get it from my i have a great grandma so <laughs> who's still alive and kicking um hey, good for her she they just say things like that it's so built into who they are Mm -hmm. in their dna it's it's really going to be up to us to keep on keeping on to do what you said stand up and speak out when people of color and people that um are classified as non-poc say things about our hair about our skin about the way we talk um and just not letting it go to the wayside not just making a, a face but making a statement Mm-hmm. That's the only way right. we're able to, to do something here. And the more we talk, the more our we clear our ancestral karma. <laughs> Shout out to me, Mermaid Moonshot. And yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, the more we talk, the more we clear our ancestral karma and the things that are built and hardwired into our DNA begin to uh, dissipate. So um, that's my, I'm going to get off my soapbox now. You're right. Yes, yes, Greek. yes, yes. yes, yes. So I guess that's it, guys. Uh, yeah. This has been another wonderful Blair View episode with uh, the vast majority of the ladies of Blair View. We will be airing this on Friday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern time where you can see all of your wonderful Blair View episodes um, during our Facebook watch party. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Come join the cool kids. Woo! Love yourselves, guys. Well, you know, it's been me, your usual, Danny, aka Neko Yasha. Uh, hey, I'm Kai, Burning Star 1401 on Twitch and Twitter, and um, Burning Star official on Instagram. Hi, I'm Ash the Conqueror 202, and I'm on Twitch, and we can have a lot of fun. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> you so much <laughs> and i am mermaid moonchild at mermaid.moonchild on instagram and facebook um come and check out the page if you want to get some more little nuggets of metaphysical knowledge like we've dropped here tonight so with that being said guys i think we're done yeah <laughs> we see ya